Hey everyone, how's it going? Juan Das here, and welcome back to this week's YouTube lesson video. And today we're talking about technique, and I'm going to approach this more as a perspectives video and have a bit of a general chat about what my current perspective is on technique and things I've learned over the years. And actually, some of this is inspired from the Meshuggah solo I was working on last week. Uh, if you haven't checked out that lesson, I'm going to put it up here in the cards. Please do check it out. It really mean the world. And I think there's a lot to gain for any musician, especially someone who wants to get out of not just their existing vocabulary, but has trouble maybe coming up with musical ideas in musical situations that tend to be quite predictable, like the diminished scale, mode 3, whole tone, things like that. But with that out of the way, let's talk about technique. And this was kind of inspired because by the Meshuggah thing, because I had this really tough time actually getting it up to tempo and I realized after a certain point that I wouldn't be able to play it at full tempo. It just wasn't going to happen. And it's not because I have a lack in my technique I would say with what I'm capable of doing with my left hand, although I ha I'm not really a tapper so much so there's that. But um, so, as I mentioned it was kind of hitting the limits of my sustained technical facility when it comes to technique. So what does that mean? I'm actually going to get into it. And lately it's been inspiring kind of a perspective, or rather a confirmation. Of, it's a confirmation of a perspective I've been taking for quite a while, and especially when I've been talking with students. Uh, every so often I'll have a student who comes in that's a little bit depressed, frustrated, um, hitting kind of a trouble spot in their technical facility because either something they're not able to play something or they're not uh, capable of utilizing an existing technique or an existing technical facility in a certain situation. And what I found is it can kind of stem from a couple of different things. So the first, now some people might know that I come from a rock and metal background before I even became a jazz musician. So as such, one of the things I'm very grateful for coming through that upbringing is that I figured out my technique first. As that meant when I ended up going towards jazz or going to Berkeley and, go and figuring out um, kind of the more musical side of things, I didn't worry, have to worry about how to execute the idea. That was simple. What I had to worry about was musical content and building a language and building a vocabulary and understanding kind of the intricacies of music and especially improvised music. So as such, this is something I like to call an absolute technique or the realm of absolute technique. What are you capable of doing? This realm for me is something that many people kind of think is their existing technique. They feel frustrated when they can't play a passage um, somewhere in like an improvised setting and kind of ascribe the problem to their absolute technique. They say, oh, I can't play things cleanly, or I can't improvise cleanly, or I'm not capable of doing fast runs uh, when I try to improvise or whatever. I'm going to touch on that later. That's actually the second aspect. But in all actuality, if you say, okay, play a scale at 250, or play this musical phrase, or play this solo, or have them transcribe something, and the student or the musician sits down and works on it, they can get it up to speed. This is your absolute musical technique, basically saying what you are capable of doing, period. And one thing I've figured out over time is that there are kind of different areas and also different balances depending on what kind of music you focus on, what you're playing, what you do, right? All of this is kind of um, a fluctuating balance, if you would. So let's put absolute technique over here. Absolute technique is what you are capable of doing in any given moment. As I said, how, quite literally, how fast you can play. Um, the absolute limit of your musical capabilities on your given instrument. Now that's all well and good, but then we touch on something that is what I like to call the improvised technical level, or your capacity to create using this stuff. And this is the interesting thing where I think many students kind of 
don't give themselves enough slack, or kind of are a little too hard on themselves. Sometimes some students will say, I have, my technique is a mess, or like, I can't improvise, and they get very frustrated, and I can't play fast when I'm improvising, not that, should, not that that should be your primary goal, but I'm just referring to this as a technique for the sake of things. Now this is where problems can start to happen, in that um, what you are capable of does not immediately translate into your technical facility as an improvising musician. Why? Because when we get into the intricacies of absolute technique, we start focusing on muscle memory and prep preparation or prepared ideas. This is why you could take an Yngwie Malmsteen piece and then not be able to improvise over a blues with the same technical facility or flair or um, whatever you want to call it that's usually present in the way you play. This is probably also why some rock and metal players, when they start to move to jazz or fusion or in general improvised music, have a bit of a hard time applying some of the concepts immediately, and can kind of sometimes feel stunted. Why? Because there's a bit of a divide. Let's say your absolute technique is here, but your improvised technique is here. Then this marks a different issue, and that has to be tackled in a different way. I'm going to tack that on at the end. Lastly, we get into something called a sustained technical facility. This is your ability to sustain a single musical idea that just repeats kind of looping and move with it. And I actually reference this in the 16th note exercise, the never-ending 16th note exercise video I did here, like I think six months ago or something like that. Again, I'll put it in the cards, please do go check it out. Is it, I think it's a really cool exercise. Um, and to kind of give a little bit of backstory, I remember being in a rehearsal one day and my mentor at the time, um, he wanted me to play never-ending 16th notes on this solo. And then he wanted me to improvise. This is kind of tied into all of the above. And this also ties in with the Meshuggah thing. Now what he wanted me to do was play never-ending 16ths, but he wanted me to stop repeating myself and also keep improvising and keep flowing through a set of chord changes for however long it may be. It wasn't just four bars or eight bars or two bars, it was maybe 16, 20, very long periods of time, musically speaking. So this triggered something, and I realized this quite early on that my technical facility was quite limited to bursts or just running through a scale. When I had to sustain it and come up with melodically interesting material that was sustained over a period of time, I actually had trouble doing that. And that is the exact same thing that happens in the Meshuggah solo. If you check out the Meshuggah solo for Born in Dissonance and the way I was playing it, there are a lot of intricate string skips that are quite difficult because, and not because jumping strings in and of itself is difficult, but maybe your hand is forced to move in ways that it normally isn't used to moving. So maybe you've got a note here on the fifth string, but then you've got to jump right here going back to the first string, or going here and then it goes, the, check out the solo, you'll see what I mean. So this uh, leads to something I've coined your sustained technical facility, your ability to maintain an idea and push it through without dropping it. And that's usually a little lower than everything else. So, as I mentioned before, this kind of brings about some checks and balances. Rather, this fluctuating balance that um, maybe one of these at any given moment is better, and I say better more as in as it's more technically feasible, so for example, my absolute technique is probably here, but my improvised technique is somewhere here, and then my sustained technical facility might be just a little bit below my improvised technical facility. And in maintaining these areas, you kind of start to realize trouble spots, and you realize that your technique is maybe a little more multifaceted and um, intricate than you think it is. It isn't just blasting technical exercises at 250 BPM. It isn't just playing as fast as you can, it isn't just playing the transcriptions of the solos of your heroes, it's your ability to 
or it, and it isn't just kind of, you know, creating your own licks and then speeding them up like crazy. It's about really having a very holistic view of what encompasses your technique. And this is with regards to specifically playing lines. Remember, there is technique required to play chords. There is technique required for smooth voice leading. If you're playing um, funk, like you're playing funk guitar patterns like um, Nile Rodgers or P-Funk, or if you're in a Tower of Power thing or doing a James Brown thing, that requires a certain technique to be able to execute an idea. So I, I don't want that to be misunderstood or it seem like I'm focusing exclusively on one thing and being awfully pedantic about it. Now, how does this relate to the student? Or how does this relate to the person who says, okay, I understand where you're coming from, technique is multifaceted, but how can this help my playing? I want you to consider this, and this is kind of what I'm gonna spend the last few minutes. How can we take this understanding of what technique is and refer it to our playing? Well, one of the best lessons I ever learned was Usually, if there is a problem in your playing, it can be funneled down to your fundamental issues. Now this can be, you have a problem with rhythm, you have a problem with harmony, you have a problem with fretboard visualization. Or in this case, your technical facility isn't up to snuff. Now let's say you're trying to play something, and depending on the context, this can benefit you. So let's say, in I'll preface, uh, depending on what type of music you play, what you do, please take this with a grain of salt and kind of apply it to your situation. Let's say you have a tough time with a technique, and you're playing this passage, let's take this, it's, you have a passage, you're having a tough time playing it, what can you do? Well, evaluate, okay. First off, is this passage improvised, or is this um, pre-prepared? If it's a pre-prepared passage, then establish, okay, am I having, do I normally have a tough time with this technique? If so, then chances are this problem lies in your absolute technical facility. If you don't have a problem with it, and normally you can play similar, similar ideas faster, then it might be a different aspect of your absolute musical technique. Maybe it's specific motions that kind of aren't the most comfortable for you. It might be left hand or right hand in terms of guitar. If, let's say, okay, this passage is kind of there, but you're hitting a road a roadblock almost. Is it a mental block or is it an actual physical block? Remember, one thing I tell my students is sometimes if you're hitting like a block, but you kind of know you can play a little faster, I, exercise, I say this and exercise this with caution, take the musical phrase or passage and push it several BPM higher than you would normally go, and then dial the speed back down. In a way, it kind of tricks your brain into having the confidence to push past a certain phrase. But if it's at the limit of your technical facility, then you realize, okay, you're hitting the limit of your absolute technical facility. And I want to kind of emphasize that maybe the younger me, uh, like, I don't know, eight to ten years ago, would have said, oh, I can play that Meshuggah thing, I'm going to brute force it. And maybe I would have brute forced uh, trying to break a certain BPM, but I wouldn't have cared much about, like, what it's doing to my tendons, or what it's doing to my hands, or what it does to my body, you know? Uh, nowadays, I'm a little more in touch with that and go, okay, yeah, I can feel this is... If I, I can feel that if I push any f harder or push any faster, then I might pull something or put myself out of commission. So you do have to be aware of this stuff. Now let's take the same phrase. Am I improvising this phrase? Okay. This is where you have to compare your improvised musical technique to your absolute technique. Are you capable of playing faster passages or more technically demanding material? Yes. For example, can you play a Bach partita, but you can't apply this in a musical setting? Then this is a sign that the phrase you're trying to work on is more, the issue is more based in terms of language and muscle memory and facility than it is on your actual technical capabilities. So if you've, you're giving yourself a hard time on your technique, that means, first off, don't give yourself a hard time and refocus your priorities. 
focus on learning the material and getting it down, getting it into your system, getting it into your playing first, and then move on, okay? And then move on to pushing the BPM. Now, the sustained technical facility part, as I, as I mentioned, is a very specific thing. So, But it could even be applied to... I'd say it's something that improves over the course of time if you're aware of it. So let's say, oh, I can, I can kind of play fast if it's something I've prepared, but I can't do it for long bursts of time. Let's say I have a hard time connecting phrases over the course of four bars. This is an issue with your sustained technical facility. And if you're improvising, then that is also tacked on. So how do you diagnose this issue? Well, maybe it's a habit. It's a, not a habit. Maybe it's a diagnosis of you're having a hard time connecting individual blocks and cells and then incorporating that to create a larger thing. Remember, one thing I tell my students is longer lines and long flowing lines are essentially the sum of multiple tiny little parts that can be manipulated at will. So if you're truly improvising with that, maybe your problem is linear manipulation, not so much your actual technique. So, the moral of the story, what am I trying to say with this video, aside from just talk a lot about technique and your technical facility and what you can actually do? The moral of the story is that our technique has limits and our technique kind of works on a spectrum. It's not a one-dimensional aspect of how fast can we play or how uh, can we pull this thing off, no pun intended. Our technical facility is actually a sum of many parts and part of this is included in what's your awareness of your language, what's the awareness of how you're getting a sound out of the instrument, can you sustain things over long periods of time. These are things that have to be addressed at some point or another if you want a more well-rounded uh, technique. Also the moral of the story is your problem, if you're having problems with your technique, please do address them and do look at it and actually ask yourself a very honest question, is this a problem with my technique? But also ask yourself more questions to further clarify why you're running into certain issues. Because sometimes the issue might not be with your technique, the issue might be with something fundamentally musical that you might have been ignoring or might be currently lacking in your playing. So, I hope you enjoyed this lesson and this perspective, this little chat. If you have any comments, questions, or if you just have a perspective you'd like to share, please leave it in the comments. I'm always reading, I'm always responding to all the comments. Also, please do like and subscribe. It really helps the channel a ton. We're almost at 1.5k subscribers, and that means we're also just a short push away from 2k, so hopefully we can get there. I think it's entirely possible and stay tuned for some more announcements coming soon. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.